Hi, it's Dave. More and more people throughout the world are putting their money in the U.S. stock market. It's part of a larger movement that is democratizing access to investing. Here in the U.S., interest in stocks is surging, especially with free trading apps like Robinhood. However, this trend is happening around the world, and it is bringing surging interest and demand for hot U.S. stocks. In today's video, I want to introduce you to a Korean YouTuber who has one of the hottest investing channels around. By the end of the video, you'll understand on a deeper level why people around the world are so drawn to the U.S. stock market. Just last week, Charles Choi contacted me through Twitter asking for an interview for his YouTube channel. And when I looked at his channel, a few things stuck out. First, his channel is in Korean and it's about investing. And in just four short months, he has already over 125,000 subscribers. And on top of that, many of his videos are being viewed over 100,000 times each. Over the weekend, I had a great conversation with Charles Choi. His channel is called Mi Ju Un, which in Korean means investing in American stocks for retirement. The context of his channel is that there's a growing retirement problem in Korea, but in also other parts of the world. In Korea, past generations didn't have to plan for retirement because they could count on their adult children to take care of them. However, culture is changing fast and the current generation growing older realizes that they likely won't have their children to count on. And with this realization, many are starting to think about retirement and where to invest. In fact, Charles describes one of the most pressing societal problems in Korea is the growing poverty of an aging population that wasn't prepared for retirement. This harsh reality is motivating the current generation to take a more serious look at how they will plan for retirement. And as they look for investment options, they are increasingly drawn to U.S. stocks. The stock market in Korea has been flat for the past decade and isn't providing stable returns like the U.S. market over time. There's a few reasons for this. First, many of the most competitive companies in the world are either based in the U.S. or have their companies listed in U.S. stock exchanges. And then you have the tech behemoths like Amazon, Google, Facebook, Facebook, Microsoft, Netflix, and others who have global brands and businesses but are all listed in U.S. stock exchanges. This is creating a realization for people in Korea and other countries that investing in the U.S. stock market might be a much smarter move than investing in their own domestic companies. I personally see this trend playing out all around the world. Investing is becoming increasingly global and the best companies in the world are attracting more investors. My interview with Charles helped me to gain more context on what's going on in Korea and Asia and helped me understand why so much global money is flowing into the U.S. markets. In our chat, we discuss how Charles started his channel, his background, and why he and his viewers are so interested in U.S. stocks. Charles also interviewed me on the same day and posted the interview on his channel. I'll add a link in the video description if you're interested in checking it out. Here's my interview with Charles Choi from Mi Ju Un. Back in uh, April, um the virus became quite uh, dominant here. And uh, the one by one, the hotels, I, I'm a hotelier anyway. So uh, I'm managing two uh, hotels in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And one of the hotels I'm managing at the moment is uh, was closed uh, from April for six months. And um, by closing down one of the hotels managing, I had to take a lot of these different um, hard decisions. And one of them was a staff salary. Um, without business, we are not able to pay uh, our team members, right? So uh, mm -hmm. I had to cut our salary by 50% for the entire troop. Mm -hmm. And as a leader, I wanted to um, uh, take a bigger portion of that uh, damage. And I decided to take 80% off from my own salary. Mm -hmm. So uh, my income dramatically uh, dropped. Yeah, I was thinking maybe I should find another source of income because I was very sure that it is not short-term problem. At the same time, I could see that in Korea, the, the people's interest in stock market was increasing, but not only in the domestic market, but outside, mm -hmm. especially in a U.S. market. Mm -hmm. And I, I could see some opportunities um, because among Korean investors, if you invest in U.S. market, uh, one of the biggest challenges you have is a um, language barrier. Uh, you have so many, uh, so much information available in different channels. Um, you can get uh, um, uh, all the financial situation and different uh, numbers and analysis and uh, opinions from a market experts. But if you do not speak good English, it's it's very hard to get it. So uh, I was thinking, oh, maybe I should. 
um, work for the Korean investors who need to that kind of information, collect them, and analyze it and uh, broadcast through YouTube. That was the uh, main idea of setting up this uh, YouTube channel. Got it. Well, I noticed like your YouTube channel has grown very fast. Um, just yes. in three or four months, you have like over 120,000 subscribers now. Um, your channel is like in, mostly in Korean language, but did, did you expect that type of response? No, I had no idea. <laughs> in the beginning, I was thinking maybe I, I will be very happy if I have 10,000 uh, uh, subscribers uh, within six months, for example. I was not in a hurry. I, I, I knew that, um, you know, the growing a YouTube channel takes time. And so uh, I was just thinking, OK, step by step, slowly, I want to um, have more and more audience. But yeah, I was amazed by the uh, the growth. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, it is kind of a stock growing <laughs> like a Tesla. <laughs> yeah, exponential growth. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering, what do you like think is the reason for the growth of your YouTube channel? I mean, like a hundred thousand in you know in three months. That's actually very fast, even for like an English speaking channel. But for a Korean channel, I think that's you know extremely fast because the Korean market is maybe smaller than right the English speaking market. Um, why do you think so many people are like subscribing to your channel? Most of the Korean investors are beginners in terms of U.S. stocks. And I'm not very different. So I can see what kind of challenges or perspective they have. And my contents are usually generated in a most simple way and easiest way to understand. Um, and the way I create content is also the same. As an investor, I mean, beginning stages, um, I wonder what kind of numbers I need to look at, what kind of information I need to find and digest, and how I should analyze those information, and what kind of conclusions uh, can I uh, reach uh, utilizing that information I collected. So uh, I show uh, that kind of process in a, a very simple way, and I believe my subscribers uh, found it quite quite interesting and also um, helpful for them. Mm -hmm. um, did you have experience um, investing for a long time with the stock market or what's your kind of background? You know, the, when I was a child, uh, my parents or teachers and society was teaching children that you have to make money from hard work. So investing is not a good way to uh, build up your wealth. That is not a good way. It's, it's not recommended. So uh, um, when people see the, the other investors uh, active in stock markets, uh, they think ah, they are like uh, um, gamblers. You know? mm -hmm. um, they are not investing. Um, there's, a very, um, uh, there's a big confusion between investment and speculation uh, in Korean um, uh, concept. So until recent uh, years, uh, people are... Uh, having people had a very negative um, image about a stock market and it was only happening for the last two, three years, uh, starting to change the image of the investment. People now can see that uh, it could be a very good way and efficient way uh, to uh, build up your wealth and prepare for your retirement and so on. Before this YouTube channel, where was your investments? Where did you put your, your money in? I have one uh, small flat in UK because I used to live in uh, London for nine years. And oh, at wow. the time, uh, yeah, I managed to uh, buy one small flat together with my wife. So that was uh, all I had before. Um, I was not really interested in stock markets. And uh, I mean, I had a, a stock um, a management account, but it was all about a speculation. I just buy and sell next week and even mm -hmm. on the same day after getting 10 percent increase but yeah i was not a really a serious investor before did something kind of like give you some realization that long term the american the u.s stock market is the best place to invest and you want to do that yourself but also help other people do that and one of the, the topic i had uh uh, for my conversation with my wife was our future, and we start to worry. Okay, what if this is not the 
uh, only event we might handle in the future. We might have a second virus in 10 years time. You never know. So uh, we start to talk about money, retirement plan. And there was a, a few different options. But in our opinion, uh, US stock market was the best choice. Uh, because first of all, you look into the history, you can see that um, the US stock market was uh, constantly providing very healthy returns to the investors, usually above 10% every year, if you average out. Um, you can have a, that kind of a investment channel um, with a similar return and similar risk apart from US market. That was the in our opinion, the best way uh, to prepare for our future. So that's how we uh, uh, managed to uh, uh, reach U.S. market. I'm curious, like, how did all of this happen? Like, let's go back to your days in Korea. Like, how did you grow up? Where did you grow up? And what was your childhood like? I grew up in Seoul, the capital city of Korea. Um, and I didn't move out of Korea for... 20 until I became 26 years old. Um, back in 1997, there was a huge economic crisis among Asian countries, um, and the Korea was literally bankrupt. Um, I was on my third year of university. It was very shocking situation because before um, it happened, um, you go to the, you study hard, you go to the good university, and you graduate, you get a good job in Samsung or Kia or LG. Your future is guaranteed. So that was the future I was always thinking and imagining. And suddenly this crisis came, and then I could see that uh, uh, my senior um, level, the the fourth year of the university, they wasn't they couldn't get a job because there was no companies hiring anymore. So I realized that oh. This is uh, serious. I have to uh, look for another uh, way to get a job. And I was looking outside. And there was one hotel uh, looking for international interns. Um, they call it the management trainees. So I applied. Um, even though I didn't speak good English, they somehow needed people very badly. So uh, um, yeah, because I believe that the hotel was in the middle of in the middle of nowhere. Kansas City is in the middle of United States, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, they have lots of conferences because the people from West and East have to meet in the middle. But they do not have a, a big population in, in that area, in Kansas or... Yeah, so uh, they needed a lot of uh, labor from outside the US and then I was able to get a job. That's uh, how I, um, I got my first, actually first career. Um, my first job was in U.S. And after one year, um, I realized that I enjoyed my time outside Korea because I could see that I'm changing a lot. Um, spending 26 years in a small country like Korea, you have a, a limited environment to grow um, your inner strengths. And only one year in U.S. was changing me a lot. So I was thinking ah, I should stay outside. And I was keep looking for uh, another uh, opportunity to stay abroad and there was a um, uh, the hotel school um, in London UK uh, it is called London Hotel School so I uh, went there studied for two years and after two years I was able to get a job in one of the uh, the hotels in London and you know spending one year two year I met my wife there uh, she's also Korean, but we, we met in London. We got married there, and time passed so fast. So uh, we managed to spend nine years. After spending nine years in UK, I spoke to my wife. Uh, I want to try my own country. Um, now I'm becoming a, a middle-aged man. Um, maybe I should go back to Korea to uh, try um, uh, what they got. And we went back to Korea, um, and I gave up after four years. <laughs> It was a very difficult environment. Um, Korea is a very competitive um, country. Um, small and uh, limited resources. And only only way to um, uh, become strong uh, is hardworking. So basically, uh, working in Korean uh, a company is very different from the US or UK. And I realized that this is not a good way to uh, spend your life. And after four years, I 
I was already very tired what and I was of, looking for... Oh, what kind of work yeah. were you doing in Korea? I was always a hotelier, so uh, I never left the hotel business. Um, but at that time, my position was revenue manager. Um, the revenue manager means when you go to Korea, uh, when you make a booking uh, on website for hotel room, you will see the every day the price changes. If you um, uh, stay uh, in resort uh, during the summertime, vacation time, it's very high rate. And if you go uh, during the uh, winter time or Monday night, uh, Saturday, uh, Sunday night, uh, the rate drops dramatically. I was the one who changed the price. I decide what kind of price I want to sell to maximize the revenue. Mm -hmm. Got so, it. Uh, yeah. so the job itself was uh, uh, enjoyable. I loved my job, um, but there are so many um, uh, different nonsenses uh, you experience if you are in Korea. For example, um, uh, you, you should feel guilty to take holidays, for example. In Korea, your holiday is like 10 days, <laughs> yeah, you, you do not have a luxury to have a four weeks off or six weeks off. You have only 10 days given to you. And when you take these 10 days a holiday, you also feel that um, you are not taking um, what you deserve. You feel like you are run away, run away from your colleagues and leaving the things behind. Uh, you are not really responsible. You, you know, you have that kind of pressure coming out. Um, so basically, you never feel happy if you don't work. So um, I, w I was already too much uh, westernized, I would say. Um, um, and that kind of environment was not easy to observe. I mean, I was already a uh, uh, 30-something, right? So 30, um, uh, late 30s. So uh, I was not able to adjust myself back into Korean culture, even though I grew up there. And... So I decided to go out again, looking for a job. Uh, I sent my CV um, around the world, China, uh, India, Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, uh, Philippines. And, and one of the hotels got me um, uh, replied and I got an interview, uh, which was a, a hotel uh, located in Jakarta, Indonesia. Um, that was year 2014. And I got the job, and I moved out to Indonesia. Um, I'm still here, here in 2020. <laughs> got it. How is it uh, in Indonesia? Are you able to, is is English the language that you use, or are you like having to learn the language there? Um, actually, I am very bad at learning uh, languages. Uh, I do not pick up language very easily. Because, uh, you know, now I, I can communicate with you in, in English, but you, you need to understand that I studied English for 40 years. <laughs> so uh, I'm very slow learner. Um, I can speak basic language in Indonesian, but uh, still my language is very basic. And one of the reasons I cannot really pick up Indonesian is because um, if you work in a hotel as a general manager, my job title is general manager. Um, you you are likely to live inside the hotel. There's a, always a big uh, uh, like apartment um, uh, built up um, uh, to accommodate the GM and uh, GM family. So uh, um, now I'm living uh, outside the hotel, just uh, outside the complex. But uh, um, usually I used to live inside the hotel together with my family. And you hardly have an opportunity to mingle with the uh, real local people. So... Uh, the, I have uh, my um, uh, extended family, which is my team members who see me uh, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Got it. Interesting. So um, I'm curious with your YouTube channel growing, are you, what are, what are you going to do? Are you going to continue with being a hotelier or are you going to focus on YouTube only? Or are you going to do both? Uh, at the moment, I want to do it uh, both together. Um, one of the reasons is uh, uh, my kids. I have uh, two small children. Um, one is eight, and the other has become just six years old. Yesterday, we celebrated her birthday. Uh, so you can see that they are still very young. Um, I do not want to take any risk um, uh, by leaving the um, um, a job permanently until they become like uh, uh, teenagers. 
and and I can focus on my own hobby or my own YouTube channel. But at the moment, I think uh, I need to uh, focus on more stable um, lifestyle um, uh, to support them. Uh, so I want to do both. It's not easy. I, I, I'm sure you know that. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it'll be very hard. But uh, I think I'm while I'm still younger, <laughs> while I'm still young, I think uh, I should uh, focus on uh, generating a value uh, of my life, and I can task, uh, take some rest uh, later on when I become a bit older. So I will continue to do both. Yeah. Um, and also another uh, plan I have for my YouTube channel is I want to expand the uh, scope of topic a little bit uh, step by step. At the moment, it's only about U.S. talk. We don't talk about anything else. But eventually, as I become older and my audience become older, um, maybe we should talk about some other aspect of retirement. Retirement is not only about financial situation. You need to prepare uh, mentally. You need to uh, focus on your health. Um, you need to decide where you want to retire. You, want, you need to prepare what kind of hobbies you want to have after retirement. Um, so there are so many different topics you can cover um, in order for us to prepare for our retirement. And my plan is uh, maybe in the future, I want to talk about a more broader range of topics in terms of retirement. Got it. Um, I'm curious, like in Korea, what is the concept of retirement? I mean, in previous generations, you know, it seems like there was no retirement in the typical sense because your adult children would take care of you, right? Would put, take you in their house. Yeah. And so you didn't yeah. have to really plan for retirement. But has that is that changing in Korea? Are people thinking about retirement? Are they no longer able to depend on their on their adult children? What's the situation like? Uh, at the moment in Korea, I think there are lots of conflicts, which means we have changes. Um, like you just mentioned, I, I can see that you are quite familiar with um, a Korean culture, Asian culture, to look after your parents. Um, if we look at our parents' generation, who are uh, like 70 years old, 80 years old now, they most of them are not prepared for their retirement because... Um, they didn't know um, they have to prepare for retirement. Um, long time ago, you you work until you become 60 years old or 65 years old, and you retire for maybe maximum five years or 10 years, and you basically die. Your life is uh, not that long. When you become 70 years old, you are likely to, you are likely to um, uh, die. So uh, retirement period was very short. That's why... Um, our parent generation uh, was not really prepared for their retirement, so we cannot really blame them. Um, but now things change. Um, after you retire, you still have a 20 years to go or even 30 or 40 years uh, to live. And without any preparation, it's very hard to maintain the minimum standard of life. And I can see that my parent's generation is the first generation who have that uh, problem. Um, now they don't have jobs. They didn't have a job for last 10 years already. No incomes for 10 years. So which means if, if me and my brother, we don't support them, they cannot really survive. Um, but at the same time, like I mentioned, it's not their fault because they didn't know that they have to prepare for retirement. Um, in, in Korea, uh, the, the huge problem is not all the parents have um, uh, their children who can offer to support them. I think uh, me and my parents are lucky because uh, I, I still have some income to share with my parents, and they are lucky because they have a son who who can uh, uh, support them. But uh, if you do not have a children, for example, or if you have children but they can they cannot they are not in a situation to support them. Um, it's a huge problem. And in Korea now, the one of the biggest the social issue is um, uh, the, the poverty of senior people, senior people who do not have a job, who do not have money. Um, so that 
um, that is now um, becoming an issue. And the generation like me, let's say X generation, um, could see that we are um, uh, in a uh, situation to prepare for our own future. Otherwise, we might have a same issue when after 20 years time. Um, so I believe recently the people's interest in retirement has become very big. That's why the, the Korean people start to invest in stocks. Um, the growth of the stock market is amazing. For example, only one year ago, last year, um, according to the statistics, only 10% of Korean people were um, investing in stocks. I mean, um, total stock, like a Korean stock or US stock together, only 10%. This year, I saw uh, uh, one article saying that the number of, um, of the, uh, the stock the broker's accounts has grown. Yeah, we have only 50 million living in Korea, and the number of the accounts open for the stock market is now 35 million, 35 million accounts. So which means um, the one person owns 0 0.6 accounts to invest in stocks. That is even bigger than U.S. because I just checked the U.S. number. In, in U.S., it's around 0 0.5. So one person owned, every two people uh, have a one account uh, owned. In Korea, it's now uh, over uh, U.S. level. So we can see that uh, people are starting to worry a lot for the future, and they are trying to do something about it. So you were mentioning that um, Korean investors hold 1% of t Tesla, so the total shares of Tesla um, out of all the shares, t uh, Korean investors own 1% of the company. Why is that? I mean, is it because Korean people or in investors are interested so much in U.S. stocks that you know, Tesla is one of them, or is there some special interest in Tesla as a company? Um, I mean, to be honest, what, what's happening is uh, in Korea, um, the stock market um, was very different from U.S. For last 10 years, um, the average return of a Korean stock market was almost zero. If you compare the index price uh, from year 2010 and now it's almost same there was no gain for the last 10 years so it, so it's very obvious that um, there was not uh, uh, many people who were making money by investing so only way to get the money um, out of stock market was uh, trading so in korea uh, investing in stock means trading and that has uh, made a, a bad habit among uh, Korean investors. Now they are coming into U.S. market, but they still um, uh, doesn't know that they have to adjust the way they uh, handle stocks in U.S. Um, the, the, in my opinion, um, the biggest reason we have to invest in U.S. market is um, good return, which was proven by the history. You have a 10% increase every year, so you just buy and wait for 10 years. That's it. But Korean people cannot do that because they are not used to it. They have to buy and sell next week because that was what, what was happening in Korea. So now they came into U.S. market. They could see that there were quite a few different options. There was Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and so on. But the, one of the stocks caught the Korean people's attention was immediately Tesla because they could see that Tesla can go up 10% one day. And the next day, 10% down. And that was a perfect um, option uh, for your trading. <laughs> so uh, I believe that was one of the uh, biggest reasons why the, Korea, the, the, the Tesla became uh, so popular among Korean investors. Interesting. Um, is, do people see Tesla cars in Korea? Are they able to kind of uh, keep track of it? Or is, that, you know, is it not very common, you think? Yes, I heard, uh, because I'm not living in Korea, I cannot see myself, but I heard from uh, my uh, subscribers that the number of the Tesla cars are improving, increasing uh, dramatically. So uh, every one um, apartment building, you have uh, one Tesla parking there, and it, it is growing quite fast. And uh, like I mentioned, maybe the, the, the trading habit uh, made a Tesla stock popular, but now um, it is changing um, quite well. Uh, the people start to realize that Tesla also has a value to invest in a long term. Uh, 
um, because the product uh, Tesla has uh, has a lot of uh, um, competitive strengths, right? So uh, now it's it's moving a little bit. Maybe initially it was mainly about um, uh, uh, the uh, big gains in a short term, but now people start to see the Tesla has a uh, inner value the, um, uh, to invest in. Mm-hmm. Got it. Um, I'm curious because I noticed you have a very like long term perspective with investing. Where did you get that from? Where are your influences? Who are you kind of learning from? And how did you get that long term perspective with investing? Sometimes uh, it would be uh, easier if you start from blank. Um, like I mentioned before, I was not really interested in uh, stock investment. And I didn't have my own philosophy. I didn't have my own habit. Um, so starting from zero, you you can you have a better chance to be influenced. So when I uh, start to look at the, the U.S. stock market, oh, U.S. stock market provide 10% uh, average return to the uh, investors. I should pay more attention. And I start to read the book. I start to watch YouTube and. The one of the uh, investors I found very interesting was like a Peter Lynch. Um, I could see that uh, there were quite a, a, a lot of people who made a good success by sticking to the uh, rule of investment. And I could see that the, the, the contents they are expressing making all sense. So when I read the book or when I see the YouTube channel um, talking about those um, uh, the celebrity investors, um, what they did was not just uh, luck. They had a good principles. They had a good rules. They com- uh, complied by. And I could see that if I stick to my own rule uh, based on uh, long-term investment, uh, I have a very good chance to uh, make myself successful as well. The way I created my own uh, uh, investment philosophy, I would say. Did you have any previous like broadcasting experience or how did you learn about this? No, I think uh, the broadcasting is one of my weakness uh, to learn uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you could see that I'm not really a technical guy by setting up this uh, e-meeting. Um, yeah, it's quite uh, difficult. Um, I, I, the only one part I hate about uh, being YouTuber is editing and <laughs> you know uploading. It's so a big headache for me. Um, but what I can do better than other people, I would say, is um, presentation. Um, uh, my my position uh, throughout my hotelier career was all about business um, analysis, uh, strategies, business plan. Um, yeah, so uh, my job was uh, revenue manager before, and after revenue manager, I was director of sales and marketing. So I talked about a lot of a lot of sales strategies, marketing uh, promotions, and so on. And after a director of sales and marketing, I became um, general manager. And gener- as a general manager, um, number one priority is, of course, um, income. You know, so uh, business number one uh, purpose existing is making money. So my uh, number one job is making money. So I always thinking about how to um, uh, attract more guests, how to promote the hotel in a better way, how to um, decrease the expense without sacrificing quality. And uh, all these strategies and numbers and figures, I have to put it into um, good form of uh, presentation so that I can present it to the people um, uh, for example, the owners of the building or the head office of uh, Accor so that they can understand what I'm trying to do. I, I was in Korea for four years. And at the time, uh, there was a, a renovation uh, for the hotel I was working for. And this renovation was not only changing the color of the paint and uh, changing the bed sheet. It was a quite dramatic change in terms of the configuration of the building. So they were talking about different room types and should we change the size of the room and so on. And I was uh, one of the uh, key members of the project team. And I was forced to present a different way of making the uh, uh, renovation better uh, almost every week. So once a week, you have to come up with uh, um, different ideas to uh, uh, make this renovation successful, basically to produce a better revenue and income. 
and you present it to uh, the, the CEO of the company and also chairman and so on every week. And which means basically for during that time, because of that renovation planning uh, was almost one year. And I had to uh, prepare 50 different strategies um, among that project. And that helped me a lot. So for me, making presentation is one of the uh, easiest thing, I would say. Um, if you see my channel, basically it's all about presentation. I present one uh, topic per uh, the, the content. And um, the one, uh, uh, one video usually consists of minimum uh, 30 up to 50 slides uh, per video. And for me, by, uh, the, to create one video of um, 50, 50 slides, it takes only three hours, four hours. Um, so the, I think that is the strength I have in order for me to run the, uh, the my style of YouTube. Got it. Because I noticed like with your YouTube videos, like they seem like rather than just a quick, you know, 10 minute video on a, on a company, you actually do quite a long video on a company. It, it feels mm -hmm. like kind of like a lecture, you know, like a class, right? <laughs> yeah. And you're like, okay, welcome to the class. And here's the hour long, you know, lecture. And you have like, <laughs> you know, so many slides and your slides are not like just simple slides. A lot of your slides, it seems like are very detailed slides. Um, is that like, have you noticed other YouTube channels do that? Or is that something that it's more that you brought over from your past experience, you know, uh, with hotels and presentations? Um, when, when I started uh, the US talk YouTube channel, uh, I asked myself, um, because I, I want to make it successful, right? So uh, I asked myself, what would be the best way to make this channel growing? And I had two options. First one was, should I focus on what people like? So for example, if I create, there are some uh, YouTubers who only talk about Tesla, for example, because they know that uh, you, they, you can um, secure uh, some uh, amount of uh, audience if you only talk about Tesla, because you know, as I mentioned, uh, Korean people has a Tesla stock, everyone has it. Um, another way to grow your channel is focusing on what you are good at. And I chose the latter because I knew that um, uh, my presentation is uh, different from others. So I, I cannot um, uh, make a good content by talking in front of camera like you do, because uh, my, my way of uh, telling story is not very different from others. It's not very um, competitive. But if I have to create one a presentation file, I can create a very nice looking presentation file within three, four hours, which not everyone can do. So I could see that I have a better chance to compete uh, with that kind of style. And I could see that there's no other YouTubers who, who does that kind of format. Yeah, because, you know, I, I was like watching a few of your videos. I'm like, wow, this is, this is unique. It's a, a little different approach than I've seen, you know, from other YouTube channels. And so I started to talk with my wife and I'm like, you know, I found this guy, <laughs> he's running a <laughs> Korean YouTube channel. And, his videos are so interesting because, you know, they're not just quick 10, 15 minutes, you know, you know, about a, a company or topic, but he really tries to go in depth and he, he makes the slides very detailed and it's like an hour long, you know, like class. And, and, and after thinking about it, I'm like, you know, that actually makes sense <laughs> in some ways. Like it's a different approach. It's not really a sensational approach. It's not saying like, oh, buy this or something. It's more like a research approach saying like, yeah. here is, you know, what I know about the company. Here's all of the different information I found. And in your case, you're translating a lot of that, you know, from English to Korean to give them yeah, value. Yeah. And then with all of that information, then you say, okay, it's your decision, right? To make whether or not you buy or sell. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, yeah. it's a very interesting approach. You know, it combines kind of research, you know, language translation, uh, presentation, but also it respects the viewer, right. To have them make their own decision, right. Based yes. upon yeah. information. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I was, I was actually very impressed by, by 
your channel. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. but I think, uh, like I mentioned, because I'm not experts, that mm-hmm. that that kind of format was uh, coming naturally. Because if I had a lot of knowledges to talk about, I don't need to look at the data, right? I don't because I already have uh, my own opinion, my own information. So I will start to talk about the company. Okay, buy Tesla because in my opinion, blah blah blah. But I cannot do that because I. I don't, I'm not in a very different situation than uh, my audience. So I have to own their behalf. I will go into the internet. I try to find a very a different kinds of information. I collect it and then I present it for them. So that which means they feel like we are in a, on the same page mm-hmm. because yeah. of my level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the past week or two, I've been trying to co- uh, copy some of your ideas in, t- <laughs> in terms of presentation. <laughs> presentation because I'm like you know you do a great job on like really packing in the information and my wife she keeps on wanting me to like make my slides like only have a few big letters because she watches my videos on her phone and she doesn't Uh, like she doesn't like if I have put slides that are very small or small letters right and so I told her last week I'm like I can't listen to you anymore <laughs> because I found this guy who does this, you know, Korean YouTube channel, and his slides are so small. His letters, you know, he puts so many letters on one slide. And I told my wife, I think I need to do his style. <laughs> and so she was like, "Okay, fine." But um, yeah, it's it's very really um really fascinating. Um, and I was also surprised that a lot of your videos get. You know, over one hundred thousand views for you know a company presentation, um, and so, and your presentations are quite long sometimes. You know, forty fifty minutes. Yeah. Like, wh- where? Who are these people? Like, are they? Are they? Do you think are they young people in their twenties and thirties? Are they working Korean people in Korea? Why? What's the fascination with? you know, these companies with investing and also with, you know, your type of in-depth research. I'm just so surprised at the response. Uh, I am surprised too. <laughs> so, uh, um, yes, uh, the, I, I can see that. I, first of all, the, one of the reasons that the, the number of the click is quite high for my video is because of the loyalty from uh, existing subscribers. Uh, if you look at the uh, comment section uh, from my channel, you will see that the number of the comments is also quite uh, high. I usually get at least 300 to 500 comments from one video, which means uh, my audience is a bit different. They are not uh, uh, the people who subscribe uh, 100 different channels um, and just drop by when when they see uh, the uh, topic is interesting new. So uh, uh, my subscriber is not like that. They are many people, there are many people who are waiting for my content. Um, and if I uh, do not upload in the a similar time of the frame, they start to worry what's happening to this guy. He's, is he sick or is he quitting? Or, you know, so uh, they, um, we are becoming a family. Um, so uh, it doesn't matter what kind of topic you put up onto the, the channel um, because um, we are becoming family and then uh, you want to know what uh, um, this guy is talking about. Um, even though this talk was never in your uh, radar, but because this guy introduced um, the stock, uh, maybe I should watch. Um, um, I think that there is a, a, a good a trust uh, built up already from, from last four months uh, among uh, me and my subscribers. And uh, I feel very lucky to have that kind of people. If you um, check, because if you go into the YouTube uh, analysis, you can see what kind of ages uh, you, your audience are, right? Um, my biggest portion of the audience is between uh, 40 and 50. And I can see that uh, after of between 40 and 50, I have a similar number of uh, 50 to 60 and uh, the 30 to 40. So I cannot say they are very young. They are quite mature people. And the, the level, the, the quality of the comments is also amazing. I hardly see um, um, 
I mean, there are some criticism or uh, um, uh, uh, objections from time to time, but the way they express their objection is super um, courteous, um, very friendly way. And um, everybody uh, wants to make sure that nobody gets hurt by their own comments. It's an amazing audience I have. I feel so lucky. Huh, wow, yeah, that's fascinating. Um, how long does it take to create a single video for you? If I'm lucky, if I if I you know if I'm in a very good condition, eight hours. Um, if I'm tired, um, distracted, twelve hours. Okay, and then do you have a goal of how many videos per week you want to upload? Yes, I already uh, made uh, a commitment uh, to the uh, subscribers. I upload three times per week, every Tuesday, Thursday, and uh, uh, Saturday. So today, after this uh, interview, I have to uh, edit our conversation and upload today immediately. Oh, wow. That's a big day. <laughs> <laughs> a busy day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I definitely, I wish you the best um, with your channel. Um, I think you've hit on so many interesting intersections of, of potential. Like for example, one is YouTube, right? With amazing, a lot of people. Um, another is kind of the Korean interest in investing, but also in retirement, but also with US stocks. And then yeah. also your presentation style with research, you know, and really going in depth as much as you can and bringing in, you know, the translation from English materials. You have so many different, you know, uh, intersections of, I think, a lot of potential with what you're doing. So yeah, I'm, I'm fascinating, fascinated about it. And yeah, I think you're, you're going to do very well. Thank you so much for the uh, positive feedback. Yeah. <laughs> I love your channel, by the way. I, I genuinely believe that you are the one of, one of the most genuine uh, YouTubers who deliver um, uh, very valuable information, especially for Tesla. So uh, I, I always watch your video contents and I, together with my wife, actually, oh, really? my wife, yeah, yeah. To be honest, what happened was my wife was the one who gave me the idea to contact you. Oh, she said, yeah, yeah, you, you have to introduce Dave to the Korean audience because um, uh, Dave has a value. And then the Korean investors heavily invest in Tesla will love the, uh, the, what uh, Dave got uh, in terms of the Tesla um, uh, the insights. Awesome. That's how I contacted you. Great, great. Uh, th thank your wife for us meeting each other. Yeah, um, I watched. I actually watched your um, one hundred thousand subscriber special video. <laughs> you did. <laughs> where you had your kids and you, you know, sing uh, a million dreams, right? And yeah. I showed it to my wife, and my wife was just so impressed that you would think of such a amazing idea, right? To connect with your subscribers it was um very emotional and very relational um and uh yeah fantastic job all right thank you so much charles though i appreciate the time yeah of talking and getting to know you a bit better thank you for having me I, it was great uh, to have a conversation with you i find charles's story quite fascinating several things stuck out while he had very little experience investing in the stock market he has compensated for it by using his research and presentation skills to quickly learn and analyze companies he also spotted a huge opportunity and decided to go for it. He saw growing interest in investing from those in Korea, and he also concluded US stocks were better than Korean ones. And then he finally didn't sulk and get depressed about losing 80% of his salary due to COVID. Rather, he looked for opportunity and decided to go for it. Talking with Charles, it's easy to see a bullish future for the US stock market. Sure, stocks aren't always gonna go up, and I'm not going to be one who's going to predict where the stock market will be in six to 12 months. However, long-term, the US stock market has some of the best and most innovative companies in the world that are disrupting huge markets. With massive liquidity around the world chasing a limited number of quality assets, it's hard for me to not see the US stock market in a decade a lot higher than it is now. And with millions and perhaps hundreds of millions of new investors around the world entering the market, I think it poses both opportunity and challenge. The opportunity is that investing is open to anyone and it's an open field. The challenge is to get outsized gains in the market and I think probably the best way is to have deep research and analysis skills. There's so much information about so many companies and how does one process all that info? It's definitely something every investor needs to think about. All right, I wanna hear from you guys. What impact do you think the global interest in US stocks will have?
If this video has been helpful, please like it and consider subscribing to my channel. We're looking at investment topics and the world through different angles, trying to get beneath the surface of things. I'm on Twitter at HeyDave7, and we'll see you in my next video. Thanks.